All right, let's uh, let's jump off that. Let's talk about the NBA Finals for a little bit. You watch games one and two? I did. So I, I went to watch Godzilla last Thursday, and I got home just in time for the second half. But now I had the whole thing DVR, and I sat up afterwards and watched all of it. Uh, but, man, I, the Raptors have got to be absolutely sick that they did not get that done the other night because it, with all the injuries and all that, it, game two was ripe for the taken. Yeah, it was, but I, those injuries aren't changing. Those guys yeah. aren't. Those guys aren't coming back. I, I just don't think they are. I I know people think KD's coming back now, and this that, and other. I, I look. I I don't. I think he knows he's not going to be on this team, and so he doesn't care. If they get a ring, he's going to get one, and if they don't, he's going to go to New York. That's just my opinion. It's my feelings. I know that Clay Clay Thompson is like. Um, uh, Bill Simmons and Joe House were talking about this after the game the other night. Uh, he's like a modern day like Brett Favre. Like like he oh he tore his rotator cuff. Yeah, he's still out there. Oh, he sprained his ankle. Yeah, he's still playing. I don't know that he's going to keep going. I've never seen somebody heal from a major hamstring injury like that in three days. It wouldn't surprise me. But even if he's on the court, I don't know. This is going to be Steph Curry's swan. Song. This is going to be his masterpiece. If they win this one, well, that, that's what I was going to ask be, you. Let, let me. Steph is going to be. He, this could bring him to LeBron Jordan level for for people who who are his demographic who've only watched basketball for ten years because they've only been alive for fifteen. Yeah, and 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 those people are going to say, "Man, this is something special." Now. I the the odds are that Draymond Green is actually going to end up being the the MVP the MVP and I'll he has played like it right I completely agree with that um but now I'm I'm very curious because we you know they've got all these talented players right DeMarcus Cousins played out of his mind the other night um KD might come back Clay Thompson we don't know Andre Iguodala you know had an injury in game 1 but looked good last game you know do they need – like, could they just put a bunch of bums around Draymond and Steph and be good? I don't know if they could put bums, but they could just put role players that don't have to dominate the game and can halfway play defense. I like, think I think I think you could trade uh, Toronto's bench for, you know, the guys that are injured, and, like, the Warriors Maybe. would still be dominant. Maybe. Like I think, I think it is Steph so, and Draymond, and, and it somebody doesn't has matter. to step up for Toronto outside of Kawhi. It's just somebody has to. Well, Kyle if Lowry has got to. He's got to score. Oh, and he's got to quit well, playing stupid. I was gonna say he's he's wor- he's literally. I would say he's worthless. He's actively actively harmful right now. Yeah. Um, Siakam first game. We didn't talk about that, and you weren't on to talk about it afterwards. Yep. Whatever. That dude. That game. That was special. That was that was one of. The most impressive performances I've seen by a guy that's just, you know, he's a dude, he's an NBA player, he's good. People in the league know who he is. but And he's had 30-point games in playoffs this year so far. I didn't see I didn't see him doing what he did in game one. He dominated that game. He broke the will and the spirit in the third quarter when, though, Golden State normally just does what they do, which is this is where we take over. This is where we go on 15, 20-point runs. You can't stop us. And and we're just something happens on defense and you just don't score anymore. And Siakam was like, "Look, I can't stop you from scoring." They caught up a lot, but every time down when they needed a basket, he was there to get it. Yeah, he was there to get it over and over and over again. And somebody has to take that role over at least one of these games in Golden State. Kawhi yeah, Kawhi cannot do it by himself. No, I, and I, he's hurt as well. Yeah, he's hurt as well. Like it can. Uh, it, do you think that the Raptors can pull out a win in Oracle, or is this thing done? No, I absolutely think they can win one of these two games. And and once again, my mentality is though is I don't think we're seeing KD. So that's that's just it. I just now they, they said he's coming back in Game Four, uh, well, or it looks like it to come back. We're yeah. looking like it. I'm telling you, man. I I could be wrong. I could absolutely be wrong. If I, if they win Game Three, I think maybe he doesn't show up Game Four. Maybe. But if they lose game three, the problem is, is that's his decision to make. It's not the team's. It's not Kerr's. It's not anybody else's. Yeah, it's just up to him. It's up to him. No, I'm I'm with you. I, I think, like, I like what I've seen from the Raptors. They have, it, it, they've got to be able to score, 
right? They have these games where they cannot hit the broadside of a barn. And it was awful. It dri- Game two that, was awful. That third quarter drove me nuts. They were up by 12 points late in the second quarter, and the Warriors get it down to five. And then they go on – between the, the second and third quarter, it was like a 20 to nothing run. Yeah, it's it just ridiculous. So, all right, you, you brought that up. For four years now, at least four, it might be five years now, we've watched the Warriors do this. They five lead years. the world. They lead the world – in third third quarter domination, okay? Yeah. Like, it's not close how much they outscore teams in the third quarter. At some point in time, do we have any kind of footage whatsoever to say, hey, when we come out after halftime, they do something defensively totally different than what they've been doing the first two quarters, so we need to completely change our offense? You can't say, oh, we're up by 12, so what we're doing works. When you have this book, that tells you the way they guard at you in the first two in the in the first two quarters is not going to be how they're going to come out. Literally, Kerr is doing Bill Belichick stuff back there. They're getting into halftime. They're seeing the offense that you're running, and if you come out and try to run that same offense, they're going to shut you down. And yeah. they've done it for four or five years. Yeah, their their defense these, is awesome in the third quarter. Not smart enough to say I got a twelve point lead, but we got to change what we're doing. Because if we come out doing the same stuff that got us a 12-point lead, we're going to lose. They're going to catch up. It's what they do. Now, but here's the thing. They did the same thing in game one and were able to hold the lead. Right? They're only able to hold because Siakam kept scoring. Yeah. They couldn't stop him, and, and that's that's it. The problem is is you got if that person's not going to step up and do that, you, you, and you still should change whatever you're doing. At least defensively, no, they're going to come out totally different offensively. Yeah. So I, I just be prepared for anything and don't fall into the, well, whatever worked in the first half will work in the second half. Because we got five years, not five games, not five weeks, <laughs> it's five, five years. years of tape to say they dominate third quarters. So I have to be prepared for something different. Yeah. No, I'm, I I totally agree with you. And I don't know what that is. I, I'm not a basketball expert. Well, the, the other side game. of this is, it, look, it it definitely hurts you even more so when you can't make anything on the other end. That's it. And with Kawhi uh, being injured, they need another person to be able to go and get a basket, right? Whether That's it's why going game to, one mattered is Siakam yeah. was able to keep scoring. Even though they brought the game back tight, when they needed the big basket, Siakam was able to score. If anybody can do that, if anybody can help out, then then that will keep those leads from shrinking to nothing. The reason game one – so Siakam in game one was great, but also Mark Gasol oh, hit a no. few shots yeah. early. I mean, he had no, 20 Marcus. points for the game. Mark was fantastic in that game. But in game two, Mark was fantastic. Game two, Mark misses his first two shots, and then he doesn't shoot again until like the third quarter. I mean, he was he was a liability in game two. Yeah, I mean, and that's they would have been better if he wasn't on the court, and that sucks. That's what Grizzlies fans screamed for years, right? That's Mark Gasol. They needed him to be the best player on the team. He is much more comfortable with being in a reserve role. That's right. And he's always been like that. He'd, he'd much rather just be like the the secondary option. That's and, right. and here he could be the third option. Exactly. If Lowry could get out of his ass, he could be the fourth option. And Well, now Fred Van Fleet. Like, now Van Fleet's played ooh, a great game. Man, that guy I was mean, unbelievable. <laughs> he's, he's had three or four big games because those last couple of games against uh, Milwaukee were yeah, he was on out there. Pretty good too. He yeah. he was on that another dude, level. That dude has made a name for himself. Oh, absolutely. Hey, you know, it's crazy to think about. Like he was on that Final Four team for Wichita State. I know, but I know. he uh, but he went undrafted. Uh, and then, uh, what's it, call it? Uh, uh, not Dan Wetzel. Pat Forty. Pat Forty wrote an article about this, talking about how I watched this guy in the Final Four. I was completely and utterly blown away that he got like undrafted. Yeah, I know this kid can play. Just give him, give him minutes, give him a chance, give him an opportunity. Oh yeah, he's I made a name for himself in Toronto. This is not new, and he's finally had an opportunity on a big stage. Now you got that right. All right, so game three in that series is on Wednesday, so that's tomorrow night. I'm, I'll talk about some picks and whatnot uh, tomorrow.